representatives of various spice industry and trade associations, distinguished delegates from India and abroad, invitees, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great pleasure to be present here in your midst at the inaugural function of the 12th World Spices Congress. The presence of the who is who of the spices sector, industry and trade from India, leaders of the global spice trade, distinguished experts from all over the world makes it a very special privilege and honor. I am extremely delighted to be here today. Spices, as all of you know, have always had a special place in world trade. The history of spices is replete with stories of adventure, exploration and conquest. The romance of spices and their role in the fall of empires and the rise of cities, as well as in the discovery of major continents, is well known. Many of you would also know that it was spices through a five shilling price rise on a pound of pepper by the Dutch that changed the world. The price hike cost a group of 24 merchant, export, merchant importers in London to form in December 1599 the East India Company to seek for themselves the riches of the East. Out of this company was born an empire which as we know at one time, not too long ago, covered half the world. Today, today in India, spices have a very special place in our hearts and on our plates. Not only do we account for about 45% of the global trade in spices, but the Indian cuisine in all its variations is a symphony of spices. Indian spices, whether they be part of curries or in various other exquisitely created recipes, represent more than anything else the flavor of India. While the terms of trade may have changed internationally and the prices of spices may not be the same and may have come down in the last few centuries, I think they are still as priced as products. Last week, we hosted the inaugural meeting of the Codex Committee on Spices and Culinary Herbs. It was a proud moment for us and it also marked a significant day of cooperation for the spice world. A sector which had been riddled with rivalries had begun to come together in close cooperation. The establishment of this committee heralds the opening of a vast opportunity for creating and harmonizing standards for a wide basket of spices. These uniform standards will ultimately lead to faster, inclusive and sustainable growth of spice production and trade, benefiting all stakeholders along the value chain, from the farmer to the consumer all across the globe. We believe that quality and sustainability along with safety are extremely important dimensions in the food products business. And standards based on scientific evidence set through proper transparent processes will lead to their wider acceptance and adoption. It is therefore a matter of great satisfaction that various stakeholders assemble here to start the process. As per reports that I have received and from what the Chairman of Spices Board has said, 
it turns out that the Codex Committee had an excellent meeting and I'm sure that in the time to come, all aspects of spice production, trade and exports will get due attention and direction in its deliberations. In, for India, we also look at this as a great opportunity and we are hopeful that the international spice standards which will be established by this process will ultimately give a great fillip to trade and export of our major spice products. Ladies and gentlemen, the vision of the Government of India for the spice sector is clear and is reflected in our priorities which have been outlined in our 12th five-year plan. We believe that the spice industry is not only about business, it is not only about commerce or trade, but it is a sector that impacts the livelihoods of millions of workers, small growers and people who through direct and indirect employment in the processing of spices and their trade are involved in this. Jobs for these resource, jobs for these often resource poor and low income people can be created and supported in a sustainable manner in this sector. Our, committed, our commitment, therefore, to the growth and development of this sector is absolute. Today, at approximately $2 billion, exports of spices account for only 5% of our agri-exports and less than half of 1% of our total exports. However, they do represent opportunities of getting much better prices of surplus produce and in times like the present with the rupee depreciating can be commercially very reward rewarding. However, there is a need to urgently move from commodity to product exports for better realizations. As I mentioned, today India accounts for about 45% of global trade but almost all our exports of spices are as commodities. We need to move to process, package, branded and organic spice exports, promote their use not only as food additives but as nutraceuticals, traditional medicines and cosmetic products. This will lead to the proven benefits of sciences like Ayurveda and other schools of medicine which use spices and herbs to the large scale, spreading beyond our borders and helping in improvement of lifestyles in other places. In turn, the realizations will snowball and benefit all stakeholders in the value chain. We are therefore committed to promoting exports of value-added products to diverse markets. All of us know that the farmer feeds the world. But who feeds the farmer is a question we need to keep asking ourselves. A grower sells almost everything wholesale, buys everything retail and pays the freight both ways. He therefore needs to be supported. The objectives of creating livelihood opportunities, promoting exports will be achieved only if planters make money, invest in plantations, expand them, attract professional talent to them and make the sector grow. It, this, it is therefore our strong focus. While over-regulation is to be avoided at all costs and we do believe that the business of government is to keep government out of business, the government of India through the Spices Board will facilitate, support and through need-based schemes try to solve the problems which growers face daily and try to create for them opportunities which they can avail. How 
cover the most important aspect for sustainability of spice production in India and the developing world generally is fair and remunerative prices which the trade and the consuming markets have to ensure for them. The Spices Board has shown remarkable efficiency in organizing the World Spice Congress here at Kochi. It's also so efficient and responsive functioning and its priorities reflecting the need of the stakeholders and their interests. Schemes are being designed in such a manner to address the problems of industry and trade and keep it competitive. However, I would like the Spices Board to take various measures to keep, make the spices sector more broad-based, have various associations from different parts of the country dealing with the trade and exports of different kinds of spices in board and make the forthcoming World Spice Congresses a truly industry function. In fact, I would go even further to say that it would be worth considering that a spice, an international spice producers forum on the lines of the International Tea Producers Forum be considered to share best practices, knowledge and improve the efficiency and competitiveness of the spice producing. The, the demand for spices is growing all over the world and this represents a great opportunity. Part of it has been riding on the back of the popularity of Indian cuisine and the spread of the Indian diaspora. From traditional markets in Europe, the demand for spices has valued food additives for enhancing flavor, sometimes disguising it, or for preserving food is cascading. The worth of spices in enhancing taste is being recognized even in non-traditional markets and in bland, comparatively bland cuisines. Thanks to the efforts of countless obscure unsung women in kitchens and people traveling across the world. Recently, while in New Zealand, I had the occasion to visit a restaurant in downtown Auckland. The steward taking my order asked me how would I like my meal? Would I prefer it mild or spicy or hot or Indian hot? Being adventurous and choosing Indian hot, I will serve food even in those parts which could stand its own and uh, with the hottest, stand against the hottest of Punjabi or Chetina fare. Our famous garam masala, a mixture of almost all the great spices grown in these parts, has therefore a very big and expanding international market. But the challenge is to address the issues of food safety, quality, and processing, packaging, and marketing. And I'm glad that the WSC over the years has been trying to address some of these issues. As far as food, sa food safety is concerned, the FSSAI, the Standards and Food Safety Authority, is working to set up and enforce domestic standards for most for spices, ensure that they are free from both contamination and adulteration of any kind. The Spices Board has also set up a network of labs to certify export consignments. But I think there is a huge opportunity in space here for the private sector as well. We have in place in India a functioning trace net system, a web based tracking system for organic products along with a network of certification agencies to certify EU and US organic compliances under the NPOP and NOP respectively. Our organic products including spices 
are winning acceptance in the most discerning markets of the West and their exports are rising at a rate of more than 30 percent per annum. Not only this, many states in India have put in place comprehensive programs of advocacy, technical assistance for, uh, for organic farming and certification of such products. One of our states, Sikkim, after a decade-long effort has been declared wholly organic and I foresee that in the next 10 years, the northeast of India, which produces some of the most exquisite chilies, turmeric and peppers, will be completely organic. All these measures will help promote and sustain organic spice production in India. But we still have a very long, long way to go. A major gap in our efforts has been in the area of marketing and branding. I am convinced that the private sector has a major role to play here. Uh, lots, lots of companies have had successes and many of them are even exhibiting their products. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. The private sector's ability in brand building in India are second to none and have been celebrated across the globe. We are trying to align national and corporate energies in building world-class Indian spice brands. The day can be visualized when Indian brands become household names across the world, standing for superior R&D, impeccable quality and enduring trust. The launch of Spice Mist by the House of the Tatas recently to make available branded high quality pepper and cardamom to discerning consumers abroad is a major recent initiative and I'm sure many such efforts are underway even now. In conclusion, I would like to submit that the setting of standards will pave the way for the enhancement in quality which will bring better monetary deals for the farmers. Securing remunerative prices through better quality will also address issues relating to sustainability in agriculture production. Another important step towards better realization for our produce is value addition and processing. Spices have been exported for centuries as commodities. It is now time to move up the value chain. Since spices are finding new applications in consuming countries, there is a great scope for marketing processed and value-added products. I feel also that the nutraceutical and the uh, medicinal values of spices have been fully harvested by the industry. And before I end, I would like again to welcome you all and wish you a very productive few days of deliberations in the interest of spice industry and trade. I am sure that with focus and determination, World Spices Congress 2014 will make a significant contribution to various issues related to the spice trade. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful stay in Kochi and in India. We thank you, sir, for those words of wisdom. I kindly request Dr. A.J. Dillon to present a memento as the token of our appreciation and gratitude to our chief guest. Thank you, sir. To bring the curtains down on the inaugural session of the 12th World Spice Congress 2014, I invite Mr. Gibo Kora of All India Spices Exporters Forum to propose a vote of thanks. Good evening. It's a wonderful evening. I see a lot of familiar faces. I see a lot of new faces. Welcome to Cochin and the World Spice Congress. Respected dignitaries on the dais, industry colleagues, from over 40 countries, 
members of the media. Today, it's an occasion of pride for the Indian spice industry to host the 12th World Spice Congress with over 800 delegates in Kochi. We have speakers from all over the world putting forth their views on varied topics ranging from regulatory to agriculture practices and more. We have representatives from international and national spice associations and governing bodies ASTA, ESA, ANSA, the Sri Lankan Board, the WSO, ISFEA, the WTO, the FDA, the Codex, the EU and more. If I missed any, forgive me for that. But this itself was a, quite a long list. Thank you all for being here. It lends credibility to the event and this Congress. On behalf of everyone here, I would also like to express our special gratitude to our chief guest, Sri JSP, who despite his busy schedule, considered it important to be part of this event. We thank you, sir, for being here. Coming to the organization of this event, two years back in Pune at the World Space Congress 2012, the theme was Sustainability and Food Safety Global Initiatives. The industry made three major commitments to the world. One, sustainable agriculture standards. Two, harmonization and simplification of regulations and three, engaging research. Subsequent to this, the Indian spice industry put in focused effort to deliver on those commitments along with the World Spice Organization, the ISFEA and the All India Spice Exporters Forum. We put up sustainable IPM programs for cumin and chilies and farm level intervention for nutmeg too. Spices Board, the Government of India, the Indian industry took lead in establishing the codex standards in spices and culinary herbs. The first commodity com committee in close to three decades. Hence, the World Spice Congress 2014 has the same theme as a continuation of 2012 and therefore to present to the world our progress for the last two years on the commitments made. We will hear more about these developments from our array of speakers over the next three days. All this would not have been possible without the sustained focus, commitment, energy and integrity of several people in the industry, not for just this Congress, but in the two years preceding this event. I would like to thank them all. Our Chairman, Spices Board, Dr. Jayatilak, for his unstinting support and leadership in making a lot of things possible. The organizing team at the Spices Board and the All India Spice Exporters Forum for their drive and ability to stay the course despite the challenges in organizing such a mega event. Handling the registrations, banking, logistics, hotel arrangements, food, the cultural programs and whatever else there is in making this event a memorable one for all of you. My special gratitude also goes to the three committee heads. The head of business committee, Mr. Ram Kumar Menon, who was instrumental in putting together the entire business program. Mr. Nipulal, head of the exhibition committee for organizing the exhibition. And the finance and facilitation committee heads, Mr. Ramalingam and Mr. Jojan Manayan, for their commitment 
in making and overcoming a lot of challenges that we had in our way. It makes all the difference when there is sheer passion and the will to succeed, to make a difference to the lives of others, starting right from the farmers and taking it up all the way to represent the country and the global spice industry. That is one motivating force that drives us all. I would also like to extend my very special thanks to the stalwarts of the Indian industry, the past chairman of the All India Spice Exporters Forum, even as we celebrate our 25th year, which incidentally coincides with 25 years of the World Spice Congress as well. To put together this vision of the World Spice Congress with the first one starting in 1990 in Bangalore. Many of you are here in this audience today. It is with utmost respect we try to follow your footsteps in setting out what you have always wanted India to achieve. It is people like you who are the inspiration for us and for the coming generations. We hope someday we will be able to do what you have done for the industry. Thank you for being here with us today. Our thanks also extend to the hotel management and staff of Crown Plaza in hosting this event.